Good morning. My name is Kristen and I volunteer here at Set Free. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this message. It's because of people just like you that we are able to expand our reach for the kingdom. If you would like to give to the efforts of Set Free Church or to Set Free Missions, please visit setfree.cc slash give for more. If there's anything we can do to serve you, please feel free to contact us at 864-269-3620 or at hello at setfree.cc. Again, thank you so much for watching. Enjoy. Oh Lord. Genesis chapter 49. It's kind of weird, but we're going to get through it today. Genesis chapter 49. Jacob is dying and he brings his family in to bless them. Actually, he brings them in and says, this is who you are. And he prophesies, this is what your future will be. And basically, on his dying bed, his 12 sons, he gives them their identity and their destiny. You know what I have found out? If we don't speak identity and destiny into our family's lives, the devil will tell them what their identity and their destiny is. Somebody going to help me in here today, I'm sure. You better be sure to identify your family in the Word of God. But anyway, Genesis chapter 49, and um, we'll start with verse 1 and 2. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together, that I might tell you which shall befall you in the last days. I'm going to prophesy to you what's going to happen to you. Gather yourselves together, you sons of Jacob, and hearken unto Israel, your father. Now remember, Jacob meant a supplanter, a deceiver. He says, come up here to Jacob and listen to what Israel has to say to you. Israel means a prince of God, a prince with God, a man that has a relationship with God. Here's what I have found out in dealing with Christians, dealing with my family, and dealing with you. I have found out that I can't look at the Jacob in you. i got to look at the Israel that's in you. And you, you, you'll never receive from Steve if you look at Steve, because Steve's got some dirty errors. I promise you, if you look close, I mean, I'm not living in known sin, but, but, but still, we're all humans. But you've got to look at the prince with God. Amen? And so watch this. He, he's got 12 sons, and here's where I want to go. You go on down to verse 19. He talks to Gad. Look what he says to Gad. He says, Gad, a troop shall overcome him. Boy, that's encouraging, isn't it? Gad, a troop, shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at the last. Gad, a whole troop is going to overcome you, but before it's over with, you're going to overcome. Notice what he's saying to his son Gad. He said, Gad, I'm going to be honest with you, dude. There are going to be some seasons in your life where it looks like you are a failure. There are going to be some seasons in your life where it looks like you are a loser. Actually, his mom named him Gad, and the name Gad actually means a troop cometh. And that speaks of battle. From the time he was born, his mom gave him a name that said, Dude, you're going to battle all your life. There are going to be times that it looks serious, Gad. There are going to be times that it looks bad in your life, Gad. There are going to be times in your life, Gad, that it looks like you were born for trouble because trouble is all you see. The old oh, hee-haw thing, gloom, despair, and agony on me. Deep, dark depression is all I'll ever see. Oh. He said, Gad, that's what it's going to be for you. Israel said, son, let me prophesy over to you. He said, yes, a troop's going to come for you. He said, but I'm not going to leave you there, son. You're going to face some trouble. You're just not going to have an easy life. People are going to give up on you and walk away from you, Gad. And it's going to look like it's over for you more than one time in your life. Am I talking to anybody in the church today? Have you ever had anybody walk off from you when you're down? Have you ever had anybody put you down act like they don't ever know you? He said, Gad, that's what it's going to be like. But I'm not going to leave you there, Gad. He said, let me give you your real identity. Gad, a troop shall come after you. But Gad, in the end, you shall overcome. Gad, you shall overcome. Your, you better identify what your future is going to be. You better stand up and say, it might be tough today, but as for me and my house, we're going to serve God anyway. As for me and my house, I'm not letting go. He's ordered my steps. He walked me into this. He'll walk me right out of this. But my future is bright and I will not get, I am an overcomer. Get ready, Gad. Life's going to come at you fast. You're not the one that gets all the easy breaks, Gad. The cards aren't going to fall your way. You wasn't born on the right side of town, Gad. 
Sometimes it's going to feel like you've been trampled by a whole troop of demons, Gab. Yet it's not going to end with the troop winning, Gab. In the end, you're going to overcome. Because seven times a righteous man falls, yet shall he rise again. And rejoice not over me, my enemy, when I am down. I shall yet rise again. And though I sat in darkness, he shall be allowed unto me. Gad, your story is not to be defeated. Gad, your story is not to be depressed. Gad, your story is not to be discouraged. Gad, your story is not to be continually cast down. You are a winner in the end. And I come by to tell some of y'all today, you might feel like an army's against you. You might but you're not destined to lose. You're not destined to be a failure. There may be times when you're weary, when you're worn, when you've been hit hard and you're weak, yet your story is one of victory. I wish somebody would help me. I, God said, I will not allow you to be tempted above that what you're able to stand, but with the temptation will make a way out. Hang on. You're going to get through it. If you've lost your joy, hang on. God's going to restore it. You will overcome in the year. What, 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 watch this right here. Go, go on. I'm going to reason with you in case you're worn, weak, and weary. I mean, hey, sometimes it ain't even you that caused it. I mean, sometimes it's just other people that's got you. Watch this. Go over to 1 John chapter 5 and look at verse 4 and 5. For whatsoever is born of God, who, who in here is born again? Raise your hand if you're born again. Okay, I'm going to identify you, okay? I'm going to identify you. Watch this. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh. Oh, well, I, yeah, yeah. If you're born of God, you overcome. Now, if you overcome, it doesn't mean that there's not a battle. But you over, the word overcome there means you subdue, and you conquer, and you put it under your feet. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory, even our faith. Oh, I don't know if I got big faith, Brother Steve. If you're born again, you got enough faith. Watch this. Verse 5. Who is he that overcometh? But he that believeth Jesus is the Son of God. Hey, hey, hey. You don't have a choice but to walk in victory. If, you're born, if you believe that Jesus is the Son of God... You got enough faith in you that's going to overcome the world. You are destined to walk in victory. Get yourself up off the mully grubs. Stop coming in here like Eeyore on Winnie the Pooh. Eeyore, we got a picnic Saturday. We want you to come. It'll probably rain. <laughs> if they predict in rain Saturday, when we show up, the sun's going to come out. Amen. He, he that believes overcomes. He that believes. Or not, now, this doesn't mean that, that you know, you're not going to have a problem. Doesn't mean that there won't be challenges and great challenges. Paul said, Paul said I've been in pearls among false brethren. That's the worst thing, false brethren. I've been in pearls among false brethren. Uh, you, you, let me tell you, in church, you're going to get offended. Some of us will have health issues. We will face a pandemic. We're right in the middle of one now. This world's going to press on you, pull on you, and the troop's going to come, Gad. The troop cometh, Gad. But greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. See, God's up to something because he said, my power is made perfect in weakness. It's not about your weakness. It's about how much power he's going to put on your weakness. Now, I, I, I'm going I'm to slow down and I'm going to get into some word and really mess with your mind. But Jeremiah chapter 12, watch this. Go over to Jeremiah chapter 12. Jeremiah chapter 12. All you folks with them phones and pads, you have to wait on us Bible people. You know y'all cheat, right? Y'all take your little Bible and, you, and your little pad and you go, Jeremiah chapter, and you're there real quick and, and you act like you, you don't even know where it's at in your Bible. You just got a pad. That's all you're doing. You, you're cheating. Don't look at me all spiritual while I'm turning like I got it, Pastor. <laughs> Donna's got a Bible. She's doing right. Jeremiah chapter 12 and verse 5. Watch this. He said, if you've run with the footmen and they've wearied you, then how can thou contend with the horses? And if in a land of peace, 
wherein you trusted, they weird you. How are you going to do in the swelling of the Jordan? Hey, the swelling of the Jordan speaks of when Israel went into the promise. He said, but you, as you're going into the promise, if the footmen are wearing you, how are you going to contend with the horsemen? If the footmen are wearing you, see, the, the footmen came first. They're the little boys. They're the ones that came with the little staves and, 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 and you know, little thing, and they came to, to fight you. But behind them was the big boys, the ones on the horses with the armor and the swords. And they was right before the king and his treasure. And he said, if them footmen are wearing you out, how are you going to get past the horsemen and get into what I want you to get into? Footmen are little guys. If you're letting the small foxes spoil you, if every time somebody says something, you get upset and lose your victory, if every time Preacher Steve says something you don't agree with, you backslide for three weeks. If cause the elder didn't shake your hand at the door, he was looking the other way, you offended and have to lay out of church two weeks. If, if, if you can't deal with the footman, what you going to do when the horsemen show up? Well, I don't want to fight no horsemen. Well, you don't have a choice. You are not called to stay at the footman level. You're called to whip up on some horsemen and go on back past them and get the trail. That's what you call for, and you're going to have to suck up and deal with it, baby, and get over crying over the footman and decide you're going to beat some horsemen. If the footman weary you, listen, don't, dear God, don't give up so easy at the little things. If you, if you can't get past the little things, then you're not going to be able to handle the world that God wants to take you into. Yeah, yeah, you, you're not going to be able to handle the world that God wants to take you into. Listen, I, I, was, I, I seen an old pastor friend of mine yesterday. I went down to uh, the park there in Williamston, b below where Don and I live, and, the, and my, our old buddy Marvin King was down there playing. And I went down to see him, and... And, uh, and uh, I was talking with a pastor there, and he, he's telling me how his church has struggled, and la 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 And he said, man, he said, we done down. He said, my giving has dropped down to $400 a week. And I, I had a heart attack. He said, he said, he said, he said, I, he, said I, he said, I bet. He started mentioning the missions and the churches and everything we got. He said, I bet you, uh, he said, I bet you have to have a lot every month. I'm talking about footmen and horsemen. And I thought for a minute, and I said, well, we pay 30, 30, uh, how many pastors do we pay? 30-something, 30 36 pastors overseas, and we have five full-time ministries. I said, well, his name's Ron. I said, Ron, it takes us about fifty dollars $55,000 a month to function. And his eyes got about that big, right? And I, that scripture popped in my mind. That's why I'm preaching it this morning. If when I was 30 years ago fighting with the footman, God had to show me the horseman. Because it still scares me sometimes. Yeah, it's scary. And when I go down on that island and I see them pastors, their wives, their babies, and I come in here in the office and I see this staff and I know they're, it bothers me sometimes. It's footmen, baby. I'm fighting with the footmen. But here's what I've learned to do. I can't let the little things discourage me from fighting the big fights because I got, I got bigger fights to fight than little mamby-pamby things. So sometimes you come around me with your little mamby-pamby stuff, I act like I don't hear it because I'm not a mamby-pamby fighter. I'm fighting footmen, and, and we got a treasure to get to. And, and you got to make up your mind. Stop it with the mamby-pamby. Beverly, it's so good to see you. I just saw you back. Bless you. you got, uh, am I talking to anybody? Yeah. Watch this now. Watch this now. I, 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 you know that this is fresh when it's on a yellow pad, right? Here's what I have found out. This is the biggest threat to Gad's becoming overcomers. The biggest threat to Gad becoming an overcomer. If you go back over in Genesis chapter 49, watch this now. Go back to Genesis chapter 49. And, and, I, and uh, 
Israel is speaking to his sons. And in verse 3, look what he says. In, in, to his fir- firstborn son, look in verse 3. He says, Reuben, thou art, thou art my firstborn, my might, the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity, and the excellency of power. Reuben, son, you are blessed. You've got excellency. You walk with power. You're the firstborn. All the blessing is on the firstborn. But then look at verse 4. He said, but you unstable as water. And thou shalt not excel, because thou wentest up to your father's bed. He had some issues in his life. He said, he said look, man. He said, you're strong, and you got all these giftings, and you got all these anointings, but you're so unstable. Now, here's the problem. Here's what you got to watch out for, you bunch of gads, because all of y'all are gads you're going to overcome. In the Bible, you'll see those 12 tribes, depending on how they camped around the uh, tabernacle out in the wilderness, they camped in the same order. They camped next to each other. For instance, Levi and Benjamin always camped together. Levi and Benjamin shared in their inheritance. They developed a strong relationship. Reuben and Gad camped together. Reuben and Gad became like one family, studied out. So much so that Gad, who was promised to be an overcomer, picked up on Reuben's unstable. He said, you're unstable as water. Water changes with the environment. Just like some Christians. Some people are Christians here on Sunday morning, but Friday night when they're out eating and, 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 and everything else, it gets a little crazy. Water, you take water and put it in cold, it turns to ice. You take that piece of ice, throw it in the microwave, it turns to water. You boil it, it'll turn to steam. It gets just right up in the clouds, it'll fall as snow. On a crisp fall morning, you'll start to see it fall on, it turns to fog. Water changes circumstantially. He said, Reuben, you got all this anointing and all this gifting, but you change with the wind, son. And so Reuben and Gad got close to each other. I'm talking about what will destroy an overcomer's life. Reuben and Gad got close to each other. Stop hanging out with unstable, messed up, podunk people. Negative, unstable, criticizing, never happy. They will keep you out of the promise of being an overcomer. It, listen to me. Please listen to me, church. It is critical who you associate with. And some of us need to go back and clean off our friends list. It's critical who you associate. Listen, if you had a problem with alcohol, you don't need to be hanging out in no bar. If you have a problem with gossiping, you don't need to be hanging out with the gossiper of the whole church. If you, if you are a negaholic, you don't need to hang out with negative people. Do you know what happened? It's, I'm not going to turn there for time's sake, but it's in Numbers chapter 32. Because, Lamar, because Gad got so close to Reuben who, who was unstable. And those unstable ways started to look right to Gad. See, if you're not careful, you can, you can let people into your life and start to give them respect. And they got all kind of funky stuff going on in their life. And pretty soon, you'll lower your standards and your levels because you think, well, I respect them. And they got all that funky stuff going on in their life. You, you, you're an overcomer. They, they may not be. So, I started out with the rising of the Jordan. Israel came up to the Jordan River to go in to Canaan. And Gad and Reuben called a meeting and went to Joshua and said, hey, go back and study. They said, hey, uh, we, we don't want to go over. We like it right here on this side. The grass is green. This is a pleasant place. We, can we just stay right here? Gad, who was prophesied to be an overcomer, didn't go into the inheritance because he yoked up with Reuben. 
and you know what happened to them? They, they, Gad and Reuben both became part of what's known as one of the ten lost tribes of Israel. Gad and Reuben stayed there, and, and the Syrians were around, and they assimilated into the Syrians to where there was, eventually there was no tribe of Gad. They were just all assimilated into the world, what they were like, if they were around. And my concern now is, in the church world, what we see going on is, you give it another 20 years, and our church people just assimilate and become so much like the world, you won't know a difference in them and us. Gad, a troop's going to come on you. But in the end, you'll be an overcomer. But what they, you know what, what they said? They come up to the place of, okay, if we're going to go on into our inheritance, we're going to have to fight some giants. And here's what they said. Well, this is good enough here. I'm happy. I mean, I, I'm content. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't need to be, I don't need to be, I, we don't need to get so radical. Y'all don't scare me being quiet. <laughs> okay, now let me, let me, we're going to dissect some scriptures. We're going to do some, give me about 15 minutes, we're going to do some word studies here, and I'm going to mess with some of you's mind. But I want to show you something. If I, had to, if, I had to, uh, if I had to title this little sermon, I would title it Manipulated Outcomes. Because God manipulates this whole world. Don and I was talking this morning. She said, man, said, manipulation sounds like it's got a negative connotation. Manipulation sounds negative. And I said, well, yeah, it could be, except when it's God doing the manipulation. Because he's a good God, right? And watch this. Go with me over to 2 Corinthians. We're going we're gonna to dig through some scriptures now. Now it's scripture time. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 4. When you get there, go, mm-hmm. Okay, watch this. This is a very familiar piece of scripture, but I want you to see something. Second Corinthians, oh God, I'm in the wrong place. Where am I at? He always causes us to triumph. Where is that at? First Corinthians? This is what you get when you write it down on your back porch, right? Somebody find it. He always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. Where is it at? Somebody would have Google, Google it right quick. He always causes us to triumph. Now watch this. Listen to what I'm telling you while you're looking for it. Where's it at? 2 and 14. Well, why would I write down 2 and 4? Okay. 2 and 14. Y'all don't pay me enough to put up with this. I'm here to tell you. Second Corinthians chapter 2. In verse 14. Now thanks be unto God which always causes us to triumph. Y'all see that? Let me, let me tell you what that says in, in the original text. Thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph, who manipulates the outcome, causes. He manipulates the outcome. I'm going to show you something. Your whole life is a setup. Now, I'm going to show you that in Scripture. But it says, he manipulates the outcome. He causes us to triumph. And the Greek word for triumph is a victory parade when one king had conquered another and he's marching that. He said, I'm going to manipulate. When you're in the middle of a battle, I'm going to manipulate the outcome to where you come out of that battle with a victory march going on. I thought you guys would amen me right there. I mean, after all, Isaiah chapter 30 says, The Lord, listen to this, the Lord longs to be gracious to you. And He waits on high to have compassion on you. He longs to be gracious to you. And, and He waits on high to have compassion for you. He's waiting for you to get in the middle of that. He longs to, hey, hey Joseph, all that you went through, and at the end of Joseph's story, he said, Am I not in the place of God? Did not God do all of this to bring me to where I'm at? Peter, a, 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 a pilot had killed James, and now he's got Peter in jail. He's going to cut Peter's head off the next morning, and it looks like it's over. But God manipulates the outcome, and in the middle of the night, a glowing, shining angel showed up in the prison, and Peter walked right out of the prison. God manipulated that outcome with a supernatural event. I'm going to tell you, he'll put, two lepers were sitting outside the camp 
And they said, why are we going to sit here till we die? They said, I'm going into the camp of the Syrians. And if they kill us, they kill us. We're going to die anyway. And, and, and I mean, that's a good attitude. I'm going to try something because if I do nothing, that's what I'm going to get. And he said, I'm, I'm going to go into the camp. And, 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 and you know the story. As they went, God made the whole Syrian army. They made a noise somewhere in their ears. And they thought they heard a whole troop would come in to attack them. And they got up and ran. And them two, old, them two old lepers walked into a camp full of gold and food and clothes. I'm telling you that God manipulated that whole circumstance. And he always manipulates the outcome in your life. Watch this. God manipulates outcomes. I'm going to show you some. These scriptures that we're about to look at intrigue me every time I look at it. Go over with me to Isaiah chapter 46. I'm going to go slow right here. Isaiah chapter 46. And uh, let's read four or five scriptures together. We've got time. It's just 11.06. Can y'all handle it if I'm not shouting at you? Y'all are word people, right? Watch this right here. In, in Isaiah 46, the last part of verse 9, God says this. says, uh, said, I am God and there is none like me. Then look at verse 10. Watch now. He says, Here's what God does. Declaring the end from the beginning. And, and, and ancient from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand. I will do all my pleasure. What? He said, I declare the end from the, from the beginning. I start at the end. Then I back up to the beginning. And I manipulate things to get you to the end that I've already declared is my pleasure. I'm going to develop that just a minute with y'all. Did y'all hear what I just said? God starts at the... He has your finish in mind before He starts. And then your whole life, whether you know it or not, God manipulates all of the circumstances and everything. He always causes us to try. He always manipulates the outcome. Yeah, you're given a will and you can get in His way if you want to be stubborn. Let me take that a little bit further. Go, go, over, to, go over to Isaiah uh, chapter 41. Watch this. I want to show you this God that has manipulated your outcome. Isaiah chapter 41. And look at verse 4. Talking about God. I'm going to read it, then I'm going to tell you what it says in the Hebrew. Who hath wrought and done it? Calling the generations from the beginning. What's he talking about? Listen, listen to what it says in the Hebrew. It says, who has wrought and done it? Calling the generations. Who has ordained and systematically birthed the generations from the beginning? Now, 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 think with me just a minute. You were born at the right time in the right... Ge- See, he, ordained, he systematically ordained the generations in the beginning. You can go back. I know where, I know where five of my great-granddaddies are buried. You can go back and dig them up. As a matter of fact, Carolyn and I have... If you go back about eight generations, we got the same daddy. But you can go back and dig up our forefathers and scrape their DNA and scrape ours, and it's the same. Same with you, right? Watch this. He systematically, uh, six generations ago, I was alive in that forefather. Oh, well, well, what? Well, Ephesians chapter 1 says you were found in Him before the foundation of the world. But, but, I, but I wasn't supposed to be born. God, has, God is manipulating this thing. I was not supposed to be born in 1650. Thank God I don't like outhouses, horses, and I love air conditioning. <laughs> Never been in an outhouse. Don't plan on going. James Paul found one down on the island one time, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, that's another story. We won't go there. <laughs> it's a five-gallon bucket, yeah. 
God has so, so uh, manipulated the circumstances that he, he stated what your end was going to be before He began it. And before it all began, He even knew what generation in your bloodline you would be born in. See, everybody's worried about, listen, everybody's worried about, oh God, our world's falling apart. Our nation's falling apart. We need to pray for our children. We need to pray for our children. And I agree with that, but let me tell you something. God has already put in your grandkids that aren't even born what they got to have in them to deal with the generation they're going to be born into. They little anointed gifts is what they are. Now watch this. I, do, do you want to take it? God, God said you're going to be born at the... I'm manipulating this thing. You're going to be born at the exact time I want you to be born. Watch this now. Go over to Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17. And look in verse uh, 26. Acts 17. And 26, speaking of God, he says, and hath made of one blood all nations of men. Well, why are we prejudiced against each other because of the color of our skin when we all got the same blood? Y'all, hey, listen, y'all know my story. When I lay dying, they, and I had to have a liver transplant, thank God the, the liver... I had, I had a transplant, and the liver that I received came out of a young, I think he's probably a 20 or so, African-American boy. He had been killed in an accident. Do you know that that African-American liver jumped up in my Caucasian body and started working just fine? And it did not say, don't put me in that white boy's body. And he hath made of, of, of one blood all nations of men that dwell on the face of the earth. Watch now, look real careful and hath determined the times before appointed. He, he, he knew when you was going to be born. And watch this. And the bounds of their habitation. 1957, August the 20th at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, I was born in Anderson, South Carolina. You know why? Because God determined that for me before the foundation of the world. Do you not think He knows you? You were born at the right time. You were born at the right place. And you're going to have the right finish because God's already said what your finish is going to be. As a matter of fact, some of y'all are here today not because you thought you'd be here in this church, but because back then God said on this day, this last Sunday in August of 2021, you're going to be right there. Hey, this piece of land used to be a farmer's land. As a matter of fact, I've told y'all a story. I'm a student of history. I got to get I got to hurry. I'm a student of history, but I found out that the, the first settlers around the Revolution era uh, were making corn whiskey for the Indians, and, and they couldn't make enough corn whiskey to keep the Indians happy, and the Indians traded the land from up past Dacusville, Paris Mountain, all the way down past Piedmont, which included Powdersville. They traded that to the revolutionary folks to grow corn on to make whiskey so they could supply enough of it. This piece of land we used to be on, the Indians traded it so they could get whiskey. Then some old farmer bought it. At the right time, some old farmer bought it and said, I'm going to keep up my family on that land. And then at the determined time, an investor bought this land and kept it. And then one day I drove by here at the determined time and seen a for sale sign laying down flat that was done out from under the real estate's hand. They didn't give up on selling it. And we bought it. Because, because when the Indians traded it for corn whiskey, God already knew Set Free Church would be here in 2021. He's determined the time. Watch this. He, he knows your outcome. He knows right when you were to be born. He, uh, he, knows, he knows right where you were to be born. I, can, I, can I take it a little bit further before I get into the rest of what I want? Right, go, go, up, go way back over to Psalms 139. I do not, in the kingdom of God, I do not believe in happenstances. I believe in times and seasons. And some things I want, it's not the season. But if you go in Psalms 139, look at this. 
Look at verse 13. Watch now. He says, uh, says, talking to God, you possessed my reins, you had control of me, and you covered me in my mother's womb. When I was an embryo in my mother's womb. Now watch this. I will praise you for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works. Now go to verse 15. My substance, my body, the substance in my mother's womb was not hid from you when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lower parts of the earth in my mother's womb is what it's talking about. Watch now. Thine eyes did see my substance yet being imperfect when that fetus was developing. And in your book all my members were written which were which in continually were fashioned Continually there means at the right time. While you was a little blob in your mama's belly, God already had written in a book what you were supposed to look like, be like, your giftings, your personality. And He had what day, while they were being fashioned, what day you would develop your fingers. What day the color would come into your eyes. What day you would de- develop your hair. He... he He knew exactly who He was creating. It was you that He saw because it was you that He spoke your future over. And He developed you just like you were supposed to be. I'm going to ask Him one day, God, when you gave me hair follicles, why did they go out when I was in my 20s? And I hate people like you. I'm not saying you don't have a choice. But God has manipulated behind the scenes and give you the will and you having to make the right choice to get in line with His will. Is everybody okay? Watch this. Go to Isaiah 40. Let's take it a little bit further. Am I, am I going too slow? Isaiah 40. If, if y'all start yawning, I'll quit and start preaching again. Isaiah 40. And look at verse 21. This scripture messes with my mind. I got to be honest. And I've talked with, uh, I've talked with one of my elders. I've talked with Pastor Caleb. I've talked with James Paul. And I asked them, because they all, I trust all of them. I think you and I might talk about it more. I trust their knowledge of the Bible. This scripture challenges me. But it is what it is. And if I believe that God manipulates outcomes, Then I have to about view this scripture in that light. Look at Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 21. God says, Have you not known? He's talking about how great he is. Have you not heard? Look carefully. Hath it not been told you from the beginning? Uh, have Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? What he just said. Didn't you know from the beginning of everything? And didn't you understand from the foundations of the earth? And I'm going to ask the question that a lot of people would think was heresy. When was your spirit born? <laughs> I'm, ch- I'm stretching your mind on it. I'm challenging you. He said, you knew before the foundation of the world. Before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. I was in relationship with you. How was he in relationship with me if I wasn't with him? And you being found in him before the foundation of the world. Listen, how do I get in him? I make a choice to believe that he's the son of God. God can say, Gad, a troop's going to come after you. But before this thing's over, you're going to kick some tail, son, because I, 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 I've already been in your future and i got a plan. Yeah. And I, I got some more scriptures. I got some more scriptures. Hang on. Somebody answered that. I'm, I'm, I'm diligently studying that. 
When was my spirit born? I don't know. I'd like to know the answer to that question. Uh, uh, I'm going to take you to a very familiar piece of Scripture. And you think you know it, but I'm going to show you something in, in the original language. Go to Jeremiah chapter 1. And I'm about finished. Jeremiah chapter 1. And look at verse... Uh, Look at verse 5. He's talking to the prophet. But look what he says. He says, Before I formed you, stop right there. Before I formed you in the belly. But, but wait a minute. Before you got in the belly, and in the belly out of my book, I started creating your body to be like it's supposed to be. Before I formed Formed you. You know what? You know what form means. Listen to this. The word form means before I gave you a preordained plan, a divine purpose. God said, before you was in the belly, I had preordained a plan. For your life. Lisa Hill met Leon at, in college. Where was y'all at? Up in North Carolina somewhere? Okay. Y'all came from two different towns, didn't you? New York. Good God Almighty. No. So, no. I just understood a whole lot about you, Leon. <laughs> But it was a, listen, before Lisa was a twinkle in her daddy's eye, God had a plan, and at the right time, she's in school, and here comes this New York dude to the same school. It wasn't happenstance. One day I walked into a study hall. I was in the eighth grade and my wife was in the seventh grade and she had on a mini skirt and had blonde hair and my heart jumped up in my throat and I fell in lust, I mean love with her right then. And it was ordained. I know some of y'all's got your fourth wife now, and you think, what happened to my life? You wasn't listening to God. With the, you was in lust instead of love with that first, second, and third. Amen. You should have waited. Uh -huh. He said, before I formed you, before I preordained a plan, watch this now, before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. Before you got in the belly, I knew you. The word knew there is, I was acquainted with you and had began to give you instruction. Do you know why little children have certain personalities when they get here? You know, even a child is known by his ways. I can look at, we got seven grandchildren. I can look at each one of them and I can see they got bends and vents in certain directions. Yeah. This little one that we got with us today, this little Enoch guy, he's going to be the guy that's in a fight all the time at school. He's, He's going to be the one. But, but you know why, 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 I, why, what I think why children are born with certain personalities in certain ways? Because, because God was acquainted with them. I think they come with instructions in their spirits to become who they are. From pre... Is this too weird for y'all? No, no. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not getting... Okay, watch this. Before I... Before I formed you, I knew you. Now watch this. Watch now. Before I formed you, I knew you. And, 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 uh, and before, and before y'all came and stayed in your mother's womb. What, what, what you say in Jer watch Jeremiah 29 11. Go over there. Watch Jeremiah 29 11. Go with me. Is everybody okay? If you're okay, say, We're okay, Pastor. See, when y'all get quiet, I don't know if you're sleeping, bored, or listening. You got to burp, do something. Jeremiah 29, 11, watch this. Watch what God says. This is another familiar piece of Scripture, but really look at what it says. He says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, 
thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. I'm closing right here, but watch this. I know the thoughts. I know that, listen, the Hebrew says, I know the devised plans. and pur- I know your purpose, and I know the plans that I have devised. I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Interesting word. You find Joseph used it in Genesis chapter 50. I know the thoughts that I think. y'all. Okay, guys, I didn't I done talk too long. Some of y'all, your focus is leaving me. I can tell I, I need to wrap it up. Watch this. Stay with me now. Put on that cerebral cap. Hang with me just a minute. I'm going to show you something. I know the thoughts that I think towards you. I know the devised plan and purpose that I think that I weave and fabricate to create a fabric. I, Donna, I thought your whole life through, God said. And I've seen everything you'd go through. And some of it that you thought was a complete mess. I took that fiber and I put it with this fiber and I weaved it all together to make you the piece of fabric that you are. And the strength that you now have is because we had to put that into the fabric. And in Genesis chapter 50, finally when Joseph's brothers came to him, and they were freaking out. Joseph said, listen, you thought, thought it for harm. Your intentions were to hurt me. Then he used the same word there. He said, but God meant it. He weaved it. In fact, God took all that y'all done to me and put it together. And then he said, for am I not in the place of God? I wouldn't be who I am, standing where I am, doing what I'm doing today if y'all hadn't put me through this. Sometimes, listen, sometimes you need to give God praise for your haters because they're making you who you are. He said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. It gets better now. To give you an expected end. The word give there is to, uh, to, to bestow a grant on you. Um, uh, to make you the recipient of a trust. Now, here, now listen, a trust is, if Don and I were millionaires, which we're not, and we had several million dollars laying around, and, and, and we set up a trust that when each of our grandchildren got 18 years old, they could step into that. God said, I have, I have given you, I have bestowed a trust. And what that means is there are certain riches in the Spirit that you will step into when you get to a certain level of maturity. There, 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 hey, there's some things that God's bestowed on put, on put in a trust for you that you ain't even walking in yet because you ain't matured enough to get to it. Mm-hmm. I, got, I got to close. Now, here, here, watch this. He says, um, I, I'll give you an expected end. Now listen to me. This is really weird. I'll give you an expected end. Here's what it says. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you an outcome with a cord attached to it. What? I'm going to give you an outcome with a rope attached to it. Now listen, Hebrew says that we have this hope as an anchor of our soul. Here's what God's saying. He said, I got your whole life, your whole destiny, everything. You, you the overcomer, Gad. And it's an outcome attached to a rope. So He takes that anchor that's your life and he throws it from eternity out into time to where your life ends. And then he ties the rope around you. And the Spirit of God starts to pull you toward that outcome that's going to happen in your life. Sometimes you're going through things and you're wondering, my God, what's going on? What's happening in my life? Why am I dealing with this? Will I ever get through this? God said, you're going to have an expected end. The outcome is settled, and you're attached to that outcome, and he's pulling you through everything that you... You've got to fight a giant. That giant ain't got a chance against you. You've got to fight a disease. That disease don't have a chance against your outcome. You've got to fight pot. You've got to fight offenses. Whatever you've got to fight, it don't have a chance But God, because God said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. My purpose is pulling me through. The one that God gave me 
before I was born. My purpose is pulling me through. I, I, I got one more. Mark, y'all can come get ready. I got one more scripture I want to give you. Isaiah chapter 44. Watch this. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 44 and verse 7. Look carefully. I'm going to end here, I think. Isaiah chapter 44. Uh, what I want to be. Isaiah 44 and verse 7. Watch what God says. Talking about there's a promise with a rope attached to it. And who is I, watch this now, shall call and declare it. Or the word is to create. A king decrees. Who is going to decree like I will? And set it in order for me. What since I appointed, look carefully, the ancient people, the things that are coming and shall come. He said, ancient people, that's history past. If you study out the things that are coming, that's right now, that's present. And shall come, that's future. Listen, God has already been in your future. And He's already said. See, you, here's what you've got to think about. He, God is from everlasting to everlasting. Hebrew, He's from beyond the vanishing point back to beyond the vanishing point forward. We're in a time capsule and we're stuck right in the middle. To us, time plays out in seasons. But from God's viewpoint, He sees the whole capsule. For, to Him, it looked the same from everlasting past as it does from everlasting future. There's no different from God's viewpoint. You and I have to walk it out. But He saw it all from everlasting past. Listen, here's the thing. God's not up in heaven playing chess. A chess player, I, I, I see what move you make. And then depending on the move that you make, I formulate what my next step should be. Do you think God's in heaven waiting to see what you're going to do before He decides what His next step for you is? No. He said, I ordained the ancient things, I ordained the things that are now, and I ordained the things that's going to happen, and I got you tied to it. I cast that anchor of hope out, and you don't have no choice, son. You listen to me and obey my voice, you're going to walk in victory. I'll pull you out of this. Some of you girls over there were in drug addiction this year a while back. You never dreamed you'd be where you are. Now, you didn't even know God had ahead of you what he's got ahead of you. But he, and you ain't even seen yet what he's got ahead of you. Here it is. Don't let go. Don't let go. Call. I'm, I call. God is standing in your future with a predestined plan. He's saying, okay, I'm over here in your future. Let's start over there now. It, 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 if it's a manipulated outcome, then the battles that we're going through, and if I can't lose because I got an expected end, then goody, goody, devil, guess who's going to win this battle I'm in? You were created to be an overcomer. You were created to be a winner. You were created to walk in victory. You're going to win in your spiritual walk. You're going to win in your family life. You're going to win in your marriage. You're going to win in your prayer life. You're going to win in your finances. You're going to win in your body, in your health. You are created to be more than conquerors. And He always causes us to triumph. And I'll give you about 30 seconds to stand to your feet and give God a praise because you're thankful that He knows you and He knows your name. If you would like prayer or to speak to our pastoral staff, please feel free to contact us at 864-269-3620 or at hello at setfree.cc. If you enjoyed this message, please share, share, share. This message is on Facebook, YouTube, and Vimeo, so feel free to share it with all your friends and loved ones. You can also check out other great messages just like this one by visiting setfree.cc, the Church Center app, or our YouTube channel, username setfreesc, all one word. Thank you again for watching. We pray you have a blessed day.